This video will go over how to add KML layers to Google Earth and make them available in Futzchem. Google Earth is a free download available to everyone. After locations are entered in Futzchem, their coordinates can be used to map them in Google Earth. You can further customize your map by adding KML layers. For example, you could include layers for containment plumes, the footprints of old buildings or storage tanks, water elevation contours, roads, or rivers. Once a layer has been created, it can be uploaded and stored in the FUDSCHEM library. Adding KML files to the library will enable other FUDSCHEM users to export them to Google Earth in the future. We can see an example of what these layers look like by going to Maps, Export to Google Earth. Let's click on the plus button next to our project name. We can see several options listed below. Each of these is a KML layer that has been added to the FUDSCHEM library and is available for us to export. Check the boxes and click Export Data. Open the file in Google Earth. As we zoom into the site, we can see a green line. If we click on it, we see it is the base boundary for Camp Richards. We also have a blue contaminant plume marked on the map. The white lines are groundwater elevation contours, and the gray rectangles are historic building sites. In the left-hand places bar, we can check the boxes to see our sampling locations. Seeing these additional features in relation to our locations can be useful in assessing our data. Let's talk about how these layers are added. The first step is to create a KML layer. It is possible to create layers using the tools available in Google Earth. This use of Google Earth is outside of the scope of FUDSCHEM training videos, but you can reach out to your Synectix point of contact for help finding resources. Layers can also be created in other GIS software such as ArcGIS. In most cases, your GIS team will be able to create a file in the correct KML format. Let's say we have a layer that was provided by our GIS team, but what if it's not in KML format? Most spatial file types can still be opened in Google Earth and then saved as KML layers. In our case, let's say our team provided us with an SHP file or shape file. In Google Earth, we can go to File, Import. We'll choose the file we want to import and click Open. A pop-up window will appear asking if you want to apply a style template to the features, which includes the ability to edit the color. However, this can be adjusted later, so we will click No. In the Places bar on the left of your window, check the box next to the layer to make it visible. Examine it to make sure the shape displays correctly. We can click on the layer on the map to see an informational pop-up. Let's say we want to update the information available in the pop-up. To do this, right-click on the layer you would like to edit and select Properties. Update the layer's name in the name field to Contaminant Plume 2015. This will update the name in the Places bar on the left once we save, but it will not update in the pop-up balloon. Type Contaminant Plume from 2015 in the description box to populate the balloon text. Next, go to the Style, Color tab. Here, we can change the color and line width. Let's change the color to blue for both the line and the fill. 
Let's change the opacity of the fill to 50%. Click OK. Let's export our layer as a KML. First, ensure that the layer is visible on the map and that the checkbox next to it is checked off. If the box isn't checked, the layer will not be visible once exported. Right-click on the layer in the Places bar and select Save Place As. Give the layer a name. For this example, we'll use 2015 Plume. Ensure the file is saved as KML file type and save it to the desired location. Once you have your KML layer available, we can upload it to the FUDSCAM library. Go back to the FUDSCAM database. To upload your KML file, click on Tools, Library, File Submission. Select Upload and choose the desired KML file. Once the file is uploaded, we will adjust the metadata to reflect the correct information. To do so, click on the notepad icon to the left of the file name. The title that we assign to this file will be the layer name in our Export to Google Earth interface, and it will be the name used in the Places bar on Google Earth. As a best practice, we can remove the .kml from the name to make it a little cleaner. The publication date is the date the file was created, in this case, today. If you got a file from your GIS team, you would need to ask them when it was created. We'll permit access to general users. The file category is the project site, in this case, Camp Richards. The subcategory is KML Layers. Note that only files categorized as KML layers will be available to include in your map export. Even if your file is a KML, it will not be available if it is miscategorized. Author organization is whoever created the file, in this case, Environmental Synectics. You can select the name from the drop-down or start typing to find it. If the author you need is not available, send us a request, and we can add it. Coverage is also the project site, in this case, Camp Richards. Lastly, assign the reviewer. Depending on your district, this may be the USACE geologist or someone else. Your Synectics point of contact can help you determine who to choose. If you would like to send an automated email notification to the reviewer that the file is ready, check the box for Notify on Certify. Once you are finished filling out the metadata, click Save and Certify. Depending on your permissions, you may or may not see the additional Save, Certify, and Approve button. Once you certify the file, it will move from Pending Certification to Pending Approval. If we go to Pending Approval, we can see that our file is here, waiting to be approved. We will act as the reviewer and approve the file by clicking on the Notepad icon and clicking Save and Approve. Once approved, the file will be available for anyone to export to Google Earth. Go to Maps, Export to Google Earth, and we can see that it is selectable here. Don't forget to subscribe to the FUDSCAM YouTube channel for more tutorial videos. All of the tutorials and playlists mentioned during this video are linked in the description below. Lastly, if you have questions or comments, feel free to contact us at fuds.support at synectics.net. Thank you.